My husband doesn't know. My husband doesn't know. Or maybe That's he doesn't fair. know. Yeah. 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 That's not fair at all to do that here and he doesn't know. Um, so, uh, there's obvious danger here. Yeah, and and they're, they're living the danger, which is that whenever you bring, whenever there are boundaryless situations and you bring somebody else into your intimacy, another intimacy is diminished. And when you're trying to maintain a marriage, you're trying to build the intimacy. It requires constant nourishment. And you know what? What you tend to, what you know, I treat a lot of couples like this. And what they, and when they're in their sort of what is working for them, it's really kind of a sexual addiction where they're using people as objects. You even heard her say, "I think we can take them out. They leave yeah. out. They're, they're, they're sort of objectifying people." But inevitably, we're humans. Inevitably, emotions enter into it, and it ends up in all kinds of chaos. Mm. It's, it's, I've never seen a relationship survive healthily in that kind of a situation. So they usually end up needing help. And it, it can go on for a long time before the house of cards falls, just like something can go on for a long time using yeah. drugs. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Sober house. Drew and Andy Dick, who are teaming up on the new VH1 show, Sober House. And joining us is Jennifer Jimenez, and she's the house manager of Sober House. And they've made it through celebrity rehab, but now the residents of Sober House are tackling the hard job of staying clean. It's not just getting clean, it's staying mm -hmm. clean. That's the hard part. Mm -hmm. Check this out. I'm in my hideout. This isn't rehab, this is real life. And what these people have on the line is everything. There's an intermediate stage that recovering addicts must get through. They do this by moving into what we call a sober house. At sober house, addicts have one foot in treatment and one foot in the real world. There will be boundaries and rules. We must follow our chores. There's like rules and we'll go through it together. There will be chores for them to do. They'll be required to get a job. I can offer you $10 an hour. Okay. They will have a curfew each night. We're going to escort you right. to the show. Right, I know, I know the guidelines. There's no sex, no acting out violently with each other. Shut the up. And of course, no drugs or alcohol. You need to not drink and not take drugs, and you need to get your together. Wow. There it is. So, Dr. Drew, one thing that stood out that you were just saying is uh, no sex. Yeah, boundaries. Andy's mentioned a couple times today. That, uh -huh. Listen, if you can't maintain bodily boundaries, you can't maintain emotional boundaries, you can't contain impulses. Wow. So I created what I called the masturbation station. I was in a, <laughs> a bunk bed, and the cameras were on all the time. So in a bunk bed, I just put a sheet up, and then in my little tent, I could take care of business. <laughs> And is that legal to do that? Um, is that legal? <laughs> as, long as, it, as long as it didn't interfere, as long as you... I don't have one of night. these on my hoo <laughs> As long as it didn't interfere with his other activities yeah, or his ability to be let's talk about the Let's yeah. talk about the ankle bracelet. I would like to see those shadow puppets. In that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, let's talk about the, the ankle bracelet. Oh, yeah, this so is an alcohol work? monitor. Well, people think that there's like a needle going right into my vein, but no, it's a... Uh, you know, if you drink alcohol, it comes almost immediately out your skin. Oh, they can tell Like an that. ounce, a little bit. Like they can't, cologne they, or yeah, deodorant cologne or hairspray. Yeah, cologne or mouthwash. They have to watch all that. I couldn't go in the makeup tell. room. It would go off, alert the police, and I would go directly to jail. And they would come jail. get you and take I'd you to jail. jail. And how long do you have to wear that? A year. And then Jennifer... Um, and this is... Listen to this one. Jennifer... I, actually, Jennifer, Jennifer and I were talking during the commercial. We used to model together when I was like 15, 16 years old in Los Angeles. We used mm -hmm. to do fashion shows and yeah. stuff. Both of us were very, very young. Yeah. And you were just saying that you had an addiction back then. Yeah, I had an I addiction didn't even know. when... You know, I, Dr. Drew talks a lot about the fact that, like, if you're, it's hereditary or it's in your genes. And, and mine, obviously, is in my genes. And so when I took my first drink, it triggered. You know, the beast was unleashed. And mm -hmm. so progressively, it got worse. And um, I did have an addiction back then. I had alcoholism. And um, I kept it under wraps, you know. And, mm -hmm. and even through my recovery, I've kept under wraps. You said the key thing, trying to get sober and then staying stopped. Staying it's staying sober. stopped. That's, That's the, the, my everyday reprieve. It's a constant battle. Mm -hmm. Every day. I, it's not just because I have accumulated years now that I'm cured. Like, there's no cure for no this. No quick fix. Yeah. No quick fix. You were saying it's a constant, it's, it's, it's working. We have did, to work every Did you day. used to feel that you had to be high or drunk yeah. to be funny? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm You did? Certainly. Yeah. And, to, yeah. and, and, and just to be relaxed and... Yeah, and for me, obviously, with the pressures of modeling or Hollywood and then turning and going into acting mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff, like, I, I believe that I always 
had to be something for everybody else. Mm -hmm. And and then when I would get so when I would get better and I was getting in recovery, and I'd get sober, I always fix the outside really quick. Like I'd get the job, I'd get skinny, I'd get the man, I'd get the shoes, I'd get the closet, you know, I'd get whatever I wanted. And I was dying on the inside, mm -hmm. you know, and I was still putting that mask on. And I was so tired of it. And then I went to treatment and I went for a five day detox and I tried to shut everybody up. And I stayed nine and a half months. Wow. And is detox like Lady Sings the Blues? Is it really like sweating and in the corner? I always wonder this. I'm not asking you as a no, joke. Really it really is. Yeah, is it, is it really like sharing. physical? Like well, it depends vomiting. on the drug. It depends yeah. on the drug. Yeah, it could be profound. I mean, we, yeah. it's, we, we are, even alcohol, you know, even beer. Yeah. Can be like a could be withdrawal. Well, alcohol it's can not, be very it's dangerous. Not, it's not pretty. We'll, we'll be right back. Oh, sorry, yeah. We'll be right back. Uh, we'll get back. Talking about VH1's uh, show Sober House with Dr. Drew, Andy Dick, and uh, Jennifer Jimenez. Now we're going to check out uh, some more of the show. Check it out. One of the things I try not to do is call Dr. Drew unless it's an absolute emergency. But it's only day one, and I have a guy here wasted on heroin. I really had no choice at that point. Hey, Dr. Drew, it's Jen. Steven Adler's high as a kite. And uh, I found needles in his pocket, and there's residue and heroin. I, I, I'm dying to know what he was thinking. Steven is going to die if this doesn't stop. It's just very simple. So they were saying Steven was close to death. Andy, have you ever been close to death with your addiction? Um, he, feeling like it? Hmm. Feeling like it, mm -hmm. yeah. And feeling like, what's the point? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's right. your most embarrassing moment publicly with your addiction? Google it. <laughs> well, you know, in, in treatment, we discovered that Andy sort of has a drive to embarrass himself. Really? Almost ahead of, it was an interesting dynamic, came out of a group, I don't know if that's going to be on TV or not, yeah, you never but that know. he's driven to embarrass himself, and that was part of the things Why we wanted to work on. I don't know, we're still looking at it. Is it just attention, or? Once again, he is my official doctor now. For years, we, I called him my unofficial doctor, uh -huh. and we, we, we turned in. a corner. Yeah, now he's not really my friend. He's your real He's doctor. My doctor. The treatment. Jennifer and I did the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Jennifer? I uh, went to treatment to Los Encinas for Dr. Drew pra uh, practices, and I then, after I left there, um, I, I was really involved. I'm really involved in recovery. And so with the producers and everyone from the show, when they came to me, Dr. Drew and I had to end that relationship. Wow. Uh, we're now... Now we're well, more peer peers. More peers. And if yeah. I can jump in again, and you, you look guys... so much smaller now yeah. than you did oh, there. Was that... I lost like 50, 55 pounds since the show. Wow. Yeah. That was a tough one, you know, because like I said earlier, like I worked so hard always in my life just to make it all pretty on the outside. Yeah. And finally they were like, are you tired? Because you need to work inside. It's an inside job. And so I did, and then I forgot about the outside. And like, I needed protection. And so the fork became my mm -hmm. best friend. And, uh, and then when I looked at down, I was like, I'm in a fat suit, you know, like, <laughs> this isn't me. And, and for me, that was like huge, because I mean, it was it was a constant battle. And on mm -hmm. the show, they, they they make it a point to let me know what they think of me yeah. about my fatness. <laughs> the, the patients. Um, yeah. The yeah. patients. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they call me uh, a lot of mean names, and, and it's pretty harsh. I wish you guys, always. you know, the, the beautiful futures and, and the strength, and if that's what it is, I'm not sure, of, he's of doing, to stay he's sober. He's doing great. All he's yeah. got to do is stay around winners like this. To stay around fine. winners. Yeah, yeah, don't get around those people and those haters, because they will hate you and try to oh, pull you down no. and pull you back. No, right? right? They mm -hmm. see the glow and happiness and the halo around you, and they want to earn. Uh, mm -hmm. So right, that's yeah. good. You guys have to stay away from them. And I just got to let you know, Andy, you're hilarious sober. Oh, thank you. Yes, are. You are. You are. You are. Celebrity Rehab presents Sober House Thursdays at 10, 9 central. And you can also check out Dr. Drew's other show, Sex with Mom and Dad, premiering on MTV next month. You guys Not are like, I know, you guys are like, <laughs> Sex with Mom and Dad? Just, just for They're the, like, for oh, the gross, shock, I'm watching. For the shock value. It's not what it sounds <laughs> okay, like. Okay, and also check out A Double Shot of Love, which airs Tuesdays at 10 on MTV. And do you think it's possible to be equally attracted to both sexes? Go to tyrashow.com and take our poll and sound off about it, okay? We'll see you later.